chicks behind the bar are a pain in the ass. We gotta make money. And so for a drink, if you can find me a woman that can bartend as fast as me, I'll put her behind the bar. Are you kidding me? He literally said that knowing that he was on camera. He wants to appeal to female clientele. And this is his opinion on female bartenders. What's up guys, it's your boy Adam again, back with another video, and today we're going to watch another episode of Bar Askew. But before we start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and uh, let's go check this out. So here we are, San Mateo, California. It's the Mandala Lounge. I'm told. Is this for real? Look at that sign. It's just a banner. Like, if you're gonna use something like that, you know, maybe temporarily, at least make sure the lights that are shining on it are adjusted properly. There's so many bright spots and dark spots, it makes it hard to even read what that sign says. I'm told that this bar is an upscale martini bar that's supposed to target women. What do you think? First thing... Those colors, they make it look like a very ghetto nightclub. You're not gonna attract women with signage that looks temporary. And like I said, it's so dark. It should be bright and inviting. Like, why are the windows so dark? It's black. It disappears. You don't want the front of your bar to disappear. You want it to be noticed. <laughs> On top of that, because it's painted black like that, you can't even see where the door is, especially at night when it's so dark. Let's show you the bar itself. This bar is pink. It is. It's pink. It's really pink. And is that what he thinks is gonna attract female clientele? First of all, the outside is what probably scares a lot of them away. Doesn't look like it's inviting. And the interior, black and pink? Who came up with this color scheme? So you're inclined to eat less and drink less. So a pink room like that is not conducive to sales. No, what's neat is look at this patio. Oh wow, this is underutilized space. Yeah, this thing is huge. Looking at it from the outside, you wouldn't even know that this place has a huge outdoor patio. They should make an effort to advertise that this thing even exists. Like, can you imagine how many people would go here just for the back patio? That was the exact measurement, as a matter of fact. So there's Greg. He's our owner. He claims to be a bar professional. There's Zach, one of our bartenders. Mm -hmm. There's Doug. He's another bartender. There's Tomas, another bartender. Wow. How many bartenders do they have? This bar is way too smart. You don't need that many bartenders right now. And it's not even that packed. Wow, what Whoa. count? What kind of count was that, dude? The three count, sir. That was, oh, your version of a three count? Jesus <laughs> Tomas. You're the manager. It's your job to train them. And you just saw what happened right there. If you don't trust the free pour, then give them some jiggers. Greg, you can see, he's one of those managers where he's gonna look over your shoulder every second. Mm. Oh good. Let's break some too while you're at it. What is he doing? Why are you talking to your own employees like that? Degrading them in front of the guests while they're working? That only makes you look like a horrible manager. I'm guessing he frustrates the hell out of his staff. Oh, I would guess. Oh dude, this bottle's completely broken. Alright, well, I don't want any glass in here. How is there broken glass inside that bottle? That bottle doesn't look broken. Did some broken glass from some other source went in the bottle? Broke when they tried to take the pour spout out. Pour spouts need to be cleaned. Oh, the top, the chipped the lip of the bottle. Well, that's liquor that's going down the drain. As Mia mentioned, you gotta make sure the pour spouts are clean because it's not, it'll get stuck. And when you try to take it out, it can chip the glass. You know, put, do the fil filter okay. paper yeah. towel thing into another bottle. Take this. That's a Are you kidding me? He's gonna serve that. He's gonna marry the bottles, which is illegal. And two, there's broken glass in that liquor. You can't serve that to customers. This is a hazard. John spies enter Mandala Lounge, a narrow 2200 square foot space with pink walls, cramped seating, and an underutilized patio. Man, this thing is so tight. It's almost like an alleyway. Like, I'm surprised they're not using the back patio because that would definitely free up a lot of space in here. Yeah, hey, it's going really good. Good. There's Angelo. Mm -hmm. He's Greg's stepson. Okay, family. Family? <laughs> she said it first. Family. Of course they're gonna hire family. No, I think I wanna do something. What do you guys normally like to drink? Usually a whiskey fan. Do okay, you have actually a... we did one whole side of the menu that's like blends and we did whiskey and vodka together, which 
Did he just say he has a section on the menu where they put whiskey and vodka together? What is wrong with him? Why would you do that? That sounds so gross. Kind of like our thing is like we try to put unusual combinations of things together uh -huh. and make them work. Yeah. No, whiskey drinkers and vodka drinkers are almost complete opposites. People who drink vodka tend to not like whiskey, and people who drink whiskey tend to not like vodka. Why would you put those two opposites together like that? A whiskey and a flavored vodka? No. That's destroying the flavor of the whiskey. Mm -hmm. Or destroying the flavor of the vodka. I feel like the only reason they would be doing that is to add the flavor. Is that what he's using? He's using the flavored vodka as a liqueur? Is that what he's trying to do? But why did he say that he, like he was proud of coming up with that? Putting whiskey and vodka together. Which, if you're making craft quality cocktails, why wouldn't you use the actual ingredients? And then, sweetie, do you care if- Oh! Oh! Don't tell me that's how he stirs his drinks. So instead of using a mixing spoon, he just swirls it around a tin? Who taught him how to do that? That's sweet. That's, why would you do that? Okay, cheers. Good to see you all. So the yeah. Texas Grinch has been one that's like been a huge seller for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. It's meant to make your mouth kind of go like, hmm. This guy is full of himself. They have the drinks. Like you don't have to convince them that it tastes good. That's the decision that they make for themselves. And he says it like he's so proud of putting these whiskeys and vodkas together like it's some kind of culinary masterpiece. I think that the vodka is freaking me out okay. with the bourbon. Oh, yeah. A little bit. Yeah, it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. It's, it's not for anybody. Nobody, like I said, whiskey drinkers and vodka drinkers are almost completely opposite. Why would you mix these two antagonistic spirits together? They said they wanted whiskey and you gave them flavor vodka in their whiskey. That's a new concept for a cocktail menu. Cocktails you may not like. Was there somebody in there? <laughs> So I, I unhappy don't know. with I don't, everything. I don't know. Like it's kind of like if you're a pure, a pure. Why is he making fun of them that they don't like your drinks? You should be offering a different drink if they don't like it. Not laughing at them. We were just noticing there are a ton of guys working here. Are there any girls here? There are no girls working here. There's no women bartenders. I mean, you're trying to appeal to females and you don't have any female staff. What is he trying to do here? I don't even want to tell you what you're about to watch. I just want you to watch this. Okay. Hot chicks behind the bar are a pain in the ass. Well, we gotta make money. And so I don't have time to put some chick with big tattoos that look hot that can't... Oh my god. He's literally discriminating against women on purpose. It's one thing if you just happen to hire all male staff, but he's purposely not hiring females. Or a drink. If you can find me a woman that can bartend as fast as me, I'll put her behind the bar. Are you kidding me? He literally said that knowing that he was on camera. And this is San Mateo. So this is in the San Francisco Bay Area. He wants to appeal to female clientele. And this is his opinion on female bartenders. Oh. I'm gonna go ahead and walk on this side of the bar. Oh. This way I can see how you break better. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. What is wrong with him? Does he think somehow degrading other people is going to elevate you? First he degrades female bartenders in general, and now he's degrading his own staff, and we saw him do this earlier. Like, who would want to work for him? And he's saying this so loud that anyone can hear it. Like, the guests can hear this. Greg around? Hi. There he is. Nice to meet a professional, man. Well, <laughs> yeah, thank you for saying so. Pink. Yeah. <laughs> it's pink in here. <laughs> Very pink. What is wrong with him? It's like the sinister laugh, like he's trying to hide something. You opened when? So we opened in June 07. What I've got to show for owning my own business is a strained relationship with my wife, strained relationship with my son, and my dad's disappointment that this is my chosen career path. Wow. Uh, I Jeez, man. Owning a bar should bring families together. I'm sure you got this place for your family, but if it breaks you guys apart, then maybe it's not the right business for you. You know, and what yeah. was your concept? Uh, it's upscale, but it's still a neighborhood bar. That, you know, that like, that you don't have to, that, you know, we were doing something that was a little bit nicer. Upscale, but neighborhood? How's this upscale? People always say they want to do something that's upscale. If you just had a dive bar that's done right, you would get the neighborhood. You don't need an upscale neighborhood bar. Just make a bar for your neighbors. That's it. And right now, it looks like you're alienating a lot of your neighbors from your sexism and random choice of colors for the inside and outside of the bar. But you know, you, you it's you, it's confusing. Nothing has worked. You know, I mean, uh, well, maybe because they're walking under a thirty-dollar banner into a pink frickin' room with all male bartenders. 
yeah, the, the, the entrance itself. You have a banner. How does that convey upscale? And then you go in, all the staff members are male. We know that he's hired male staff on purpose because he doesn't want to hire any females. So it's not by sheer coincidence. And thinking that women want to drink whiskey and vodka together, that's just so out of touch. No, no, it's not even the female drinkers. Like in general, what target is he trying to go after? Why are there no women here? Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. I haven't met a lot of women that can bartend as fast as men. There are issues with female bartenders. This, when was this filmed? This is not that old. This is pretty recent. There is a bartending competition called Speed Rack where it's specifically female bartenders competing for speed. Has he not heard of it or something? Um, I can't reach the top shelf. I can't lift the case of beer. Um, you know, uh, crying if I talk too harshly to them. No way. I can't believe he's saying this on camera. I haven't met a lot of female bartenders then, have you? Mia, come on over for a sec. You said that there's not a woman bartender who can be faster or better than you. I ha no, I haven't, I haven't. Worked. That's what you said. Okay. Oh my God, this is so cringy. I can't believe he's actually saying this. Oh my God, I, I, I can't believe this. Now I want to prove to you how wrong you are. All right. Let's get behind the bar, me on one side, you on another. I'm gonna give you guys five drinks. They're gonna be common drinks. Everybody knows the ingredients. Take a Oh my God, this is going to be interesting. Now I'm gonna prove to you that you're not hot. Hmm, probably not. Your concept is wrong, your interior is wrong, the way you treat your employees is wrong, your attitude towards women is wrong. What the hell is right? Yeah, like, <laughs> this business isn't failing because he's, it's all internal. It's stuff that's going on within himself. Like if this is how he views his employees, how you view females, like how can you survive when you're just full of hate and anger inside you? A Manhattan, Cosmo, margarita, a martini, and an old fashioned. <laughs> I have a feeling that I'm going to enjoy this. <laughs> Clean it up. How you doing, man? Great, how are you? Good. That's He's building the martini right into the glass. You have to stir that and strain it into the glass. That's the way you guys do a martini. You pour the vermouth in the glass and then pour the chilled vodka over it. Is that what he did? Why did he do that? Like, what's the reason? Why would you chill the vodka and then have room temperature vermouth? And now when you strain the chilled vodka under the warm vermouth, now your drink just got warmer. Why not build them and chill them at the same time? Mia's about to put all these drinks out there. She's shaking two, you're shaking one. She can't shake two drinks. What? What is he making? Why did he stick a spoon after he strained it into the glass? Now Mia, present all your cocktails to your guests. Look at me as cocktails. Who's better than you? <laughs> wow, that damn man, she kicked his butt. Look at his face. <laughs> He's like so emasculated right now. Let's compare. Okay. Putting the Cosmos next to each other. Yours has ice chips floating all over the top of it. Cosmos should be clear, correct? Mia's is right, correct? You can see it. So not only is he slower, but he also wasn't able to make the drinks correctly. What do you want to say to Hotshot, Mia? Nothing. Arrogance is your obstacle. Your head's up your ass, man. Yeah, like I said, this problem stirs from what's going on inside his head. And how this bar is run is just a reflection of that. Who agrees with me? Get your attitude together, I'll help you in the morning. I've never seen somebody put their foot up Greg's ass so hard before. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you bully your employees. They'll root against you. You really want to have a team where they want to see you embarrassed? 
I busted my ass for this place, and I didn't really get anything out of it. There's some animosity here, isn't there? Yeah. Why? Res resentment. I mean, really. Tell him. I think you're really hard on me sometimes. Like, uh, for... I mean, there's one thing that they're family, but, I mean, we saw him disrespect the other employees. Like, if you're gonna disrespect your family, and it seems like he generally wants to help his stepdad. This guy has, like, a lot of issues. Simple mistakes that, with a little support, I could fix, but instead of that, I get yelled at. I can let a mistake go, you know, first few times, but when that mistake happens over and over again, I don't believe it's a mistake. That's the way that I see it. So you don't think people can make mistakes more than once? You think he's doing this on purpose? Just think about what you just said. Doug has been fired three times. She's been fired <laughs> three <Yes>. times. <laughs> Why were you fired last time? The That's specific incident was you took my booze that we are marrying the bottles Is up. it legal to pour liquor from- He just straight up admitted to marrying liquor bottles. Casually just admitted that. One bottle to another. No, no, I guess it doesn't. It's illegal to trans- So he knows. He knows. Is that what you want to teach your son, how to be a dishonest thief? Do you understand how up this is? Yep. Now I wonder why the hell- Jeez, I know, that's what kind of- your stepson obviously looks up to you and you're teaching him to break the law. <laughs> that's, man, that's messed up. Hi. Hi. Anything you want to say after last night? There's a lot I want to say after last <laughs> night. I want two things from Greg. I need to hear you say that I'm better than you and B, that I deserve your respect. Jeez, man, this guy, his ego. <laughs> This is what toxic masculinity looks like. It's not helping him, it's doing him harm. The reason the bottle broke last night- This bottle's literally broken. Is because your poor spout gets sticky, they get stuck. But an easy way to do this is the V-Rod. This is a bar tool that's designed as a bar key. <laughs> yeah, I have one of those too. Yeah, this is the one I'm currently using. It's like a Nintendo themed. And then the back is like a duck hunt. I freaking love these. Not only is it a bottle opener, but it has this little thing right here that helps you remove poor spouts. Game on! Half yeah. Uh, totally screwed that one up. You guys just keep costing me money and wasting time. Awesome. Different. Dude, you can't be degrading your employees. It's not gonna make them work any faster or make less mistakes. Like, it's going to do the complete opposite. You undermine their confidence, they're gonna make more mistakes, and they're gonna make the drinks slower. How we doing? I think we're gonna be hard pressed to hit our 110 drinks in 55 minutes with this crew. How can I help you? Uh, you know, I'm okay. You're good. Just okay. Stay out of the way. Why is he just standing behind the bar like that? He's just watching them make the drinks. Go on the other side of the bar. Bust some dirty glassware. Check if all the guests are okay. All right, Zach. Straw, garnish. Dude, shut up. Who cares how they're making the drinks? There's enough people behind the bar right now. Go to the other side. Talk to the guests. Doug gave him for this burrito. What was odd was the guy next to us had to pay. What? He forgot to charge him or something? And that's kind of strange that the customer noticed this. It might be a good idea if you helped usher some of these people out to the patio. Ladies and gentlemen, we are also serving drinks on the patios. Oh my god, the, the patio wasn't opened? Dude, look how packed that is. You have a huge outdoor patio. You should have been directing them outside to create some more space in this place. Beverly Collins, you got it. Dog, you didn't muddle. I haven't gone there yet. Get there. I haven't gone there yet. You have liquid in there. You can't muddle the fruit when the fruit is floating in the liquid. Like, what are you gonna press the fruit against? It's just gotta move around the liquid. All of his other cocktails. I'm sharing a well with you. Mine's okay. getting burned. You gonna yours getting burned? Yep. You make me too. Free drinks for you guys. Enjoy them. Why did he say free drinks again? Is he giving these drinks for free on purpose? Greg. Yes, sir. Doug served eight drinks and not collected money. That's so what he's doing could be quick. He's just not collecting money. So, so he's chipping the place away. Doug? Yeah, is he doing this on purpose or an accident? Why do he keep... You're not collecting money for this. It happens one more time, I will fire you. Do you understand that? You'll okay. never walk in this building again. And you should have seen it. There we go, ladies. Yeah, because he's too obsessed with micromanaging that he doesn't see the big picture, which is one of his bartenders not charging the customers. Guys, you got 22 minutes. Look, 
look at this. You're screwed. You are not going to do this, guys. Greg, do this. You looked at me and said, piece of cake. We can pull this off. Double up on the uh, on your mixes, OK? Soda, soda, garnish, garnish, straw, straw. Dude, stop micromanaging. That's how you fail to see that one of your bartenders forgot to charge. Just more managerial responsibilities that you need to take care of, rather than making sure that the straw goes into the drinks. Let me give me one of those. Thank you, sir. We're down to a minute, 30 seconds. All right, Angie, you got it. Soda, soda, garnish, garnish, straw, straw. Gonna make it the... Stop instructing your bartenders. Pay attention to the guests. Pay attention to the overall big picture, right? It's things that the bartenders are not able to look at. Let's go. Three, two, one, stop. How many of you got drinks that you didn't pay for? How many of you got... Oh, my God. I don't care how busy you are, but if you're too busy to collect money for the drinks, why even be behind the bar? The whole purpose is to make money, all right? If you're not charging the drinks, you might as well not make the drinks in the first place. Drinks you did not pay for. From Doug. That's not acceptable. What are you gonna do about it, Mr. Owner? I'm sorry, Doug, but you're gonna have to go, dude. Yeah, it's like one thing to make mistakes, but he had an attitude and he was giving away free drinks. Let's talk about Angelo. Angelo. He walked down this bar and asked me to taste a cocktail before giving it out. Can you try this for me? Yes, of course. Yeah, I noticed that too. That's how you know that he cares. Like, he cares about the quality control. Very cosmopolitan area. Style. Gotta have technology. So what do you sense for cocktails? If we're gonna try to market it to the Silicon Valley crowd, I think whiskey's the way to go. So you're gonna put blueberry? Yeah, San Francisco, we love our whiskeys. And earlier we saw those female guests were asking for whiskey. And it's the same, regardless of gender, a lot of San Franciscans and people who live in the Bay Area, like we do love our whiskeys. You guys ready to sit? Yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> they actually have a real sign instead of a banner. And this one's actually lit properly. Oh, look at this. Wow, oh my god. Wow, that bottle display looks pretty sweet. Also love how the entrance looks like an elevator, so it makes it feel like you're like in a skyscraper in San Francisco. Oh, this is beautiful. These are like live shots. That's so awesome. Oh. Wow. Oh my god. That's amazing. Oh, that's pretty cool too. So the windows makes you feel like you're a skyscraper as well. It's like you're actually looking out from a 38th yeah. floor. Wow, look at this, look at the light. Oh my God. It feels so... Dude, the lighting is so much better. Remember it was like pink and black? It didn't make any sense. But now you have the lighting that is giving it a feminine touch. Let me show you guys okay. the deck, okay? Oh my God! Oh my God. Oh, oh, wow. Man, earlier that outdoor patio was underutilized and it had pretty good structure, but now they added all this new furniture and yeah, it looks so much better. We have our video system. You can pull yeah, up a webcam like all over the world with different apps. You can have New York night. Yeah, You're looking at Times Square. You That's a TV and you could change the cities. That's pretty cool. I thought it was just a picture. Hey, if you enjoyed that, don't forget to check out these other videos as well. And please leave on the comment section on what videos I should react to next. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one.